Hi Conley Clan fam! Today we are coming at you with some updates. We have been in our Texas house now for what has it been about three weeks? Yeah a little over. And uh, we're gonna tell you about the reality of what it's like here and also give you some baby updates. If you guys see me looking down, I have my notes here. We have had so much happen um, and I just wanna make sure I don't miss something. So I took some notes and we are gonna let you guys know, uh, let's start with the reality of what it's like um, being here. Right. I don't think anybody's lived here for, I don't know, quite a while, maybe five, 10 years, something yeah, like that. Yeah, in the house. Yeah, in the house. Yeah. yeah, I think they used it for uh, some type of a hunter's refuge to come yeah. and hunt and stay. Um, I think they used it for their company or something. Yeah. First of all, we get here and it was like, I don't know, 630 in the morning. We hadn't slept and <laughs> that's totally like us. Yep. And so then we had the big thing with Sean having to go back and get our stuff that we left on the side of the road. And so that was a huge ordeal. And uh, the very first thing that happened was um, in one of the kids' bathrooms. So there's a room where uh, like a bunch of the girls share because it's a pretty big room. And there's a bathroom in there that's attached to that room. And it was filled with ladybugs. Yeah. Yeah. At <laughs> least it was ladybugs. It could yeah. have been a lot worse. <laughs> oh, oh, could you imagine? Oh, the, But the, the kids, yeah, they treat them like they might as well be uh, black, like, black widows. Yeah, yeah. Even though they're... I, like I just don't even when I was a kid I loved but like I love picking up worms and I loved ladybugs right. and I'd let them crawl on me and and they're the the red ones so you know the yellow ones I've heard bite <coughs> but uh, the red ones aren't supposed to be bad so but they hate them they kept freaking out they wouldn't even go to the bathroom in there so we got that fixed figured out yeah we out. yeah we vacuumed them up and cleaned it up and yeah. sprayed what we needed to spray yeah. um and that wasn't too hard but it was no. a lot of a lot of things come at you when you first move into a, yeah. a vacant home that's not been lived in um you know not just for a month but maybe a year or two well and everything we've been through i feel pretty lucky because really things could have been worse you know we hadn't walked through the house we just looked through the windows right but um right I, and as far as that that goes we you know hit the jackpot because yeah and, and you can kind of tell a house from the outside what it looks yeah, like right. and what it's probably going to be like inside mechanically and everything else yeah by how well the outside's been kept right up. Yeah. and it it had been kept up pretty well for being vacant i felt like then we figured out um and you reminded me that we were sitting on the couch one night kids were in bed um, and all of a sudden we heard this little munch, 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 and mm -hmm. coming from our cabinet. Uh, and Sean's like, shh. And we're like, oh my God, it's a mouse. Yeah. So the house had some mice, uh, you know, in and out of it. I'm sure um, being there, um, we spooked a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, we've never, I've never lived in a... Uh, a mobile home type of th type of house where it's up off the ground but yet there's there is the access to the underneath side so a lot of those pests and things like that could very well be underneath the house even though it seems to be sealed up pretty good well we went into town to get mouse traps and the lady at the hardware store um, she said oh yeah take care of those things now she said it while they're coming in you know you don't want to have a problem later right. which was interesting yeah so evidently the mice start coming in here when it starts getting real hot um, whereas in nebraska we where we originally from they come in right before winter hits yeah. so we know to look for them and to set traps you know right before winter because they're looking for a home so we we have figured out that it's in the reverse here because of the extreme heat whatever yep then uh, and this just recently happened um, 
the there we have live oak trees and apparently there's like some caterpillar that lives in them although in town they told you that they really hadn't been seeing it we've got these caterpillars they're called live oak uh, I guess live oak caterpillars and they are literally infiltrating our home we have killed hundreds if not th well probably hundreds um, but they keep coming up here wanting to form cocoons and everywhere you look they are headed to our house to find a spot to cocoon in it's really a eye-opening experience but one of our trees, which is a really beautiful one. Uh, yeah, the big sprawling live oak. Yeah, had so many caterpillars hanging off of it, like on like a little... A br one branch should have like uh, 500 to 1,000. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. like literally they are falling off, you know, using cobweb type stuff that they spin. Yeah. And they, they float in the wind and go back and forth. And when they get to a spot, maybe the side of our house, for example, they drop off and, or they hit close and they walk their way to the house and crawl up, but trying to get to the eaves to make their cocoons. Which is disgusting. And you could hear, like, you can hear them. Like, it'll be like, tink, 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 Yeah, it's tink. like it's sprinkling. Yeah, and you can hear them falling. It's so gross. Yeah, it is. And you had to, like, really watch where you were walking because if you walked under that tree, which is right, like, actually where our path is to go from our back door to our cars, uh, you had to, like, dodge them, you know, because right, right. they're hanging there and it's so gross. So, you got stuff. Yeah, I tried a couple different things, some pesticide stuff from Walmart, um, and it did help. I try to always get the indoor and outdoor stuff so that in case the kids come in contact with it, I know it's a little safer, um, even idea. though it's outside. Um, but this that that helped, but it didn't cure the problem. Uh, it was bad. Yeah, and then um, when we like right after we first moved in, um, Sean had to go around and fix all the toilets because uh, they no. just weren't flushing right. They wouldn't fill, um, you know, and you need a tank full of water for a toilet to work. Um, and they, I think they all were kind of calciumed up and gummed up and I had to replace some of the lines and get those going and, uh, they're old. Two of yeah, the, yeah. two of the bathrooms are old. Well, one of stools. them is a brand new toilet and it's hooked up to hot water. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting the things I've found since being here and I, I, I'm sure they know what they're doing and maybe they get in a hurry, but uh, I have found some really crazy stuff that they <laughs> they did and it didn't really cut down on their work, I don't think, as far as the construction aspect, but they have, they have put metal over the top of the gutters, oh, so yeah. the water basically is channeled from the roof down the side of the front of the or the front of the gutters it then you took jade to the eve so let's start with the rash so jade got this rash and jade loves to get into things like she's definitely our biggest explorer and she is not afraid of much of anything and so you took her to the er and so you were at the er on your way to the er and i there's no water in the house i went to go turn on the sink and there's no water yeah. And all of a sudden, Emma comes running in and she's like, I, I need to show you something. And so I run to the side of the house and sure enough, there's water just spurting out everywhere, which I think I've showed, shown you guys that video. You know, the kids let the ducks out and they let the birds out in the morning and they came running in and uh, they were all upset because the, the duck, you know, uh, that had been attacked. And so, and unfortunately, you know, living on a farm, I feel like, um, that's just part of it, you know. You yeah, and, and having the 80 acres I had before when I was younger um, prepared me for that. Um, and we kind of talked about that. When you have a farm, you see a lot of death. And it's yeah. not it's not a fun thing, but it's part of life. And it's how, how it works out here. Right, right. Well, then, um, so I've shown you guys the footage of Zoe with our little... Uh, chick when it was gosh, when we, like right after we got it home oh yeah um, and she had 
uh, put it in her mouth and we were letting her sniff it. We didn't, I, I didn't think that Zoe would do that. Uh, but the other night, so we have our dogs, our two collies are in a kennel um, in our back porch area, like the kids room. And we let Zoe just kind of run loose in there because she's pretty good. She doesn't usually have accidents or anything. And, um, and we had our, our chickens in a tote with real tall sides up high on a chair and didn't think anything of it. It had been fine. Mm -hmm. And one night in the middle of the night, the dog, one of the dogs started barking and I heard tweeting and I knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. And I hopped out of bed and I ran to the room thinking maybe I can catch it. And uh, what had happened is the little chicken was learning to flap its weather, or flap its feathers, you know, its wings. And uh, it hopped up on the side of the tote. And yeah, perched up on the side of the tote. And I think Zoe just was right there to. Yep. Went over there and got it. And by the time I got out there, um, it, it, ha it was dead. And yeah. So we lost one of our chicks and uh, that was hard to tell the kids. You know, the kids get so attached to the animals. Um, yeah, and any death makes you yeah, feel bad. Yeah, I, and I couldn't, after that I couldn't sleep um, for the rest of the night. So, um, so we've had that happen. Um, and then there's been a lot of like wild animals and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, really been an eye-opener for the last last three weeks we've been here. And we, we, we knew what we were getting into. We just didn't realize yeah, how, sure. how wild it could get. Yeah. But um, when the sun goes down or starts to go down, everything starts moving. Um, and we're talking about the wild hogs, the feral yeah. hogs that they have a problem with in Texas. They are, they are running in packs of 20 maybe 30 at times and then you'll see some uh singles out but usually the the other ones are close behind waiting to come out into the prairie or whatever yeah, that's what i figure ground but uh since we've been here we kind of feel like we are surrounded by a zoo of yeah. things that really aren't behind bars <laughs> well we've got the armadillos and the other night i let zoe out to go to the bathroom and there was one like literally right there at the back door and so she chased that one and tried to bite it, but got its shell. And uh, so I don't know if that one will be back in our backyard again. And then probably. we walked. Probably. You're prior. Yeah, probably. Probably. Then one, um, we walked outside one day and uh, was it you saw the three hogs like literally right next to our yard? Yeah. We just went into our uh, back of the house area and noticed well rosie thought it was an armadillo noticed this thing over here and do you see what i see that is a wild hog and there are more of them i see three right now that i can count a big black one and then it looks like two brown ones that is crazy those things are huge yeah. Um, and they were checking out the lot next to us. Well, and what these hogs do is they come in and just wreak havoc on your, your ground. They will put a foot deep hole a half a mile long with their snouts. And this ground is extremely hard here compared to Nebraska. It's made up more of clay and sand. Mm -hmm. And they can destroy your yard so fast. And I've taken some footage. I don't know if we've gotten that out to you guys yet. But uh, anyway, these, these hogs are everywhere. They're all over this ground around us. And apparently it's quite the problem. So hunting them is on one of my top, <laughs> top on list. On top of your list. Top of my <laughs> list. Um, and if anybody out there knows of a good uh, caliber gun, uh, for hog hunting. I would love to know about it because I'm in the market. Well, and then, uh, so, a fun fact, Sean likes to speed. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, well, I was pulled over the other day going to Rockport, which is about 40 minutes away, and uh, he pulled me over, very nice guy, and actually knew a neighbor or two on our road here. Yeah. And we got to talk, and he ended up giving me a warning, just so everybody knows. I didn't get a ticket. <laughs> That's the last thing we need right now. Yeah, right. Um, but we got to talking about the uh, feral hog problem, and he said, you know, it's legal to, to shoot them. 
and uh, I, I love to hunt. I haven't for a few years, but my, my oldest son and I used to go out quite a bit. Well, and then on, I guess it wasn't that trip, or maybe it was that trip, you, you saw uh, another wild animal run across the road. Yeah, <laughs> yes, two days ago, we, went, we were on our way into town, into Refurio, and sure enough, there are two uh, road runners that crossed right in front of us you know and the kids kids have never seen them i think i've seen road runners you know on the side of the road um but nothing that close but it was pretty cool seeing those and uh it seems like every single day we're seeing a different uh animal of some sort yeah, it's whether crazy. it's in the air or on the ground yeah um that is you know slows you down and makes you think what in the heck i've seen those but what is that um, and it's really cool. I love the fact that there's so much wild out here. Um, yeah, we love the country. Yeah, yeah. It's it's what makes it fun, you know, amongst other things. But right. every night we get in the truck and put the kids in the back and we, we take them around our property. Exploring. Exploring. And yeah. we are always finding something. The craziest stuff. Yeah. The last it's really night. Cool. Last night we had. Um, a lot of fun with the we came across a field in the back here that was full of cattle and we'll have to show you a clip of that the kids and everybody were so into making the moo sound oh they love mooing at him and they've taught christian to do it yeah it's so he's he's really the one leading the pack yeah. on the mooing yeah but uh it was absolutely hilarious we had 10 of the kids mooing including raya i think i was in there too mooing at these this pack of uh cattle <laughs> fun you can have with cows <laughs> um and then okay so we ordered so we went and i think I've, i maybe talked about this a little bit but we went a couple weeks without internet and uh, so we have it now but those two weeks it was really super hard to do school um so we were using workbooks and reading you know, and reading and yeah just teaching kind of like life skills and things like that um so we have that now so we're now we're trying to get into this routine where you know we're back in a normal routine using um we use education.com and um we have some other things that we use but so we got that set up and then we set up trash and you know the first week trash they just dropped off our bins and then the second week they were supposed to actually come pick up and they they didn't they didn't come pick right. up so we had like several weeks of yeah trash. and then, the, then last week it was well we'll pick it up on friday and then we'll get set yeah. up for mondays from now on well they yeah. didn't show up on friday no we're hauling trash. a truckload yeah. you know of trash in our bins and everything else back you know down to the street and then yeah. back up to the house which is not you know we're probably a football field away from yeah. our trash. from our gate and uh yeah so we got real tired of that but the buzzards were getting into it or whatever the birds were tearing it up every day yeah. and well, we'd have to go around and clean it up it was awful yeah. awful yeah uh, so they did finally come yeah and they were nice I, I caught them luckily with the extra stuff before they you know they zoom off at about 105 miles an <laughs> hour yeah. trying to get back on their route because we're down on the lane quite a ways they're they don't i don't think they appreciate that they have to come this far probably not but nobody else comes out here like literally it's the only company that comes out here right so well we do see 
Well, I don't know if we've seen FedEx or UPS or anybody. I, I right think I've seen FedEx once. Now, I know like Amazon delivers here and Walmart will deliver here. and uh, But I am supposed to be getting a package from Walmart. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see, we'll if, that see if that up. happens. <laughs> but we're going to have to remember to open the gate. Otherwise, yes. he's going to have to yes. walk, you know, a quarter mile to our house. Yeah, we don't have a, a package mile. drop yet. Um, we need to get one up so that way I can order my packages. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so then our lawnmower. So we we obviously needed a lawnmower to mow the yard. And um, some of it we're going to let grow, I think, and just eventually get an animal. But um, some of it needed mowed. So Sean went out and got a I lawnmower. I went out, yeah, and found a used Cub Cadet, which I'm a big fan of Cub Cadet. Um, and I know a lot of John Deere people are probably out there rolling their eyes. But it <laughs> is it is a really good uh, homeowner style riding lawn mower um, we've got one back home but it's a heavy duty mm -hmm. one and yeah. it's built more for ag like this yeah so we're going to swap those out but this one was uh i don't know five six seven years old hardly any hours on it yeah it was a good deal the only thing i noticed was a red flag was the deck on it was not the 50 inch like had come with it from the factory it was a 42 inch which I didn't like that because I know somebody's been tinkering with it. Mm -hmm. Got home and I did some mowing and uh, that didn't last long. Nope. It's about 15 minutes into it, the deck belt was broken. So I had to quickly uh, figure a way to make it happen. We ended up getting a used de mower deck and put that on and that didn't want to work right. That was day two, I think we were yeah. at that point. Day three, I finally figured out I'm, I'm going to, uh, I took a break, came back out and noticed the original deck that had come on it to us, the 42 inch, had a spring that had been put on wrong. It was pulling the wrong direction and so that got fixed and now all is good. Yeah. Thank God, really, that you know how to do that stuff because uh, we would have been out. So. Yeah. So yeah, you were able right. to fix it, which yeah. is good. Okay, last, probably the thing everybody wants to know about, the baby update. Mm. Okay, um, so here's what we found out so far. Uh, in the state of Texas, you are allowed to have six children, and um, I guess something happened where a judge sued the state because... I, Some, I think a child died in somebody's care. I think, had too yes. many. They, they assumed it was because of numbers, but I don't think it has anything to do with numbers. I don't, yeah, I don't either. But I guess um, there was a lot of abuse going on in foster homes. Like kids were getting abused in foster homes. And, it's the um, worst. Right. I mean, that's awful. So the judge sued the state, and uh, so now they're sticklers on numbers. And uh, they said that we could get licensed for a group home, but we'd have to like go out and search for an agency that would actually license us for that and then there are certain things you have to have in place like 24-hour supervision we'd have to hire and um, things like that right they're not they don't seem real big on siblings so it does it's not Keeping like the siblings together yeah. it doesn't seem to be a priority no it doesn't and because of their whole number thing I think yeah and so it it doesn't seem like I called ICPC here in Texas and talked to them and um, I appreciated they were very brutally honest and said that probably isn't going to happen and even if it did happen um, it would be like 18 months before you could even probably get the placement and you know it just takes a long time for ICPCs which we know uh, but so that didn't seem like a reality so the other option I talked to our adoption worker in Iowa love her she's great and um, so she was kind of walking through it with me and said I asked her about doing a direct placement she said well we could do that but you'd have to live in Iowa we can't do a direct placement out of state you still have to go through ICPC so you know we talked about even maybe renting a house in Iowa or something like that but that just didn't seem feasible yeah really. and, and we might have done that for six months but we we probably wouldn't have wanted to do that for much longer yeah and it honestly with Christian uh, um, it took like uh, it was about a year from the time we got him um, placed to the adoption and so we really didn't want to have a place in Iowa for a year and um, so the thing that made the most sense was 
keeping our home in Omaha mm -hmm. and doing an ICPC between Iowa and Nebraska, which is fairly easy. We know that Nebraska will allow us to have a sibling because they're big on keeping siblings together. Uh, we've already talked to our agency and they agreed that um, we could get the sibling. Um, here's the thing though. So we, when we moved here, we sent an email saying that we were not going to renew our license. But at that point, our agency sent a letter to the state saying that um, we were closing our home. And so now they're trying to figure out if they can go back and rescind that notice so that way we don't have to go through all the classes again uh, because we're, we're already licensed foster parents. We do have to renew. We do have to renew our license. Uh, and we always do educational things like we've learned about. Well, all the counseling counts for some. Yeah, the counseling, the therapy that we've been right. through with the kids. Yeah, the EDN stuff. We have um, our early development network. We've been through stuff with them where we've learned about um, like cr with Christian speech and behaviors and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think renewing would be a big deal. And hopefully that's all we have to do is just renew. Um, hopefully we're able to rescind the notice and keep our license. Right. And um, so there, our agency is checking into that right now. Uh, and we know that um, I've let the state know that she's pregnant and that we're interested in taking the baby. And the only thing really where there's a roadblock is that I found out from our adoption worker that Iowa has this new thing where, um, and it wasn't like this with Christian, but where the foster parents that take the baby while you're waiting for your ICPC approval, they have an option to choose if they want to adopt that child. So if they wanted to adopt that child, then they have to do interviews between us and them. Mm -hmm. And then that person has to pick, I'm guessing it's the caseworker, um, has to pick who they believe is the best home for that child. Now, we have one thing going for us and that's we have all the siblings. So we have four siblings. Right. Uh, the bad thing is that we have a lot of kids and our adoption worker said people might look they're like people might frown upon that you know thinking mm -hmm. like you yeah. know they have too many um, so I am I'm hoping and of course I, I feel like we'll put it in God's hands and if we're meant to have the child that's right yeah we'll we'll have the child uh, you know God will just see to that so that's what we're doing um, also it made sense to keep our Omaha home because we weren't sure about um, our oldest daughter. She really has no place to live right now. And so she's been staying there. Um, and so ultimately, we we would really like to uh, keep the Omaha house. Yeah, yeah. Just because of holidays, Christmas, yeah. we need a, right. a good place for a hurricane plan. Yep. You know, to go to and stay for a week. Yeah, thank at a you. Time. Uh, thank you, Misha, for bringing that to our attention yeah. because as soon as you said that um, we got on that so well, we decided that keeping the Omaha house would be good for a hurricane plan um, because then we can go there you can know visit and stay yeah, and we can I mean, visit, we could yeah. make a month out of it yeah right I mean we could visit family and get out of the hurricane and well yeah and then any siblings in the future if we have that house there any siblings that happen to you know, come in the future that right. need a place, um, we'll have that and we'll just keep our license active. Um, so for now, you know, we talked about getting this other lot over here, lot 24. Um, and at this point, if we're going to keep our Omaha house financially, um, we're it not going to be able yeah. to do that. Uh, make sense. And I really, really, I think we both really, really wanted that lot. Uh, that does mean that we're going to have to put some things on hold. So having the two houses creates a problem for having animals. You know, it's hard enough taking our three dogs and our chickens and ducks with us, yeah. which we will have to do. We'll have to take them back and forth. Yeah, we're, um, we already feel kind of like the Clampets going back and forth with with the uh, the animals <laughs> and the small rigged up trailer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense. It, this is a short term fix right yeah, now, I right, feel like. Right. And in a year or six months or who knows how long, we may change our mind. Um, right. But it seems to make sense right now to get our bearings a little bit. Yep. Take care of the sibling, yep. possibly, um, and uh, keep the house. Yeah. I think I, I do too. So I agree that that makes the most sense. We've, you know, we've talked through it. And, and I, I'm sad. I'm sad that we're not going to be able to start our garden. And I'm sad that we're not going to be able to get animals right away. Um, you know, that... 
that's going to stop us from building right away. Well, one um, of the things we we liked about this is we've always wanted to do cattle and horses and things yeah. like that. Um, Goats. Right. And you can't buy one of those things and have this traveling aspect in your life. Nope. Yeah. And those, so there, those are things that we're going to have to figure out. But because um, eventually I would like to have, you know, that stuff. The um, giraffes. <laughs> Hippos. An elephant. Those are the only things I think <laughs> that we haven't seen out here yet. <laughs> zebra. We have seen zebras. Actually, ostriches. Oh my gosh. Actually, We've there's seen. a house. Yes. There is a house here. And they own zebras and uh, ostrich. And what else do we see out there? And they have like antelope. Yeah, antelope. They have the big steers, like huge horns. The longhorn. The longhorns. Long yeah, yeah, yeah. Steers. Uh, what else? Oh, camels. They had camels. Yeah. Oh, this we go by this house driving in between here and Rockport. And it, we're always, we're like, here's the house, here's the house to the kids. It's really and, crazy uh, what it you, is. you see on the side of the road driving. But it's it, legal. If you look it up, it's legal to own those things here. Yeah. like It's nuts. Yeah, the roadkill here is, is educational. I mean, <laughs> back home, a roadkill is basically, okay, somebody ran over a squirrel. Yeah. This is horrible. Yeah, right. Here, it's like a 400-pound pig on the side of the road got hit. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what in the what kind of car survived survive that? I mean, they oh, are thick. True. They are solid. That's true. No and, uh, yeah, so very different life. It is very different life. So for now, guys, we're going to keep both houses, and uh, we're going to just do that for a little while and see how that works out. And hopefully, hopefully, pray for us, we can get the sibling and that works out. Um, so we will just, right. you know, this yep. is all part of the journey, right? Yep, we'll keep you updated. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Peace.